Hello everyone, welcome to Apollo Cradle Children Hospital. A session is based on AV menstrual breeding. We would like to welcome Dr. Jyoti Baskar, who is our in-house gynecologist and she holds a degree in MD, MRCOG, FICOG and gynecologist. Ma'am, you can take over the session, ma'am. Thank you so much, Meena. So very good morning to all the young girls and the women who are sitting here today, out here to listen to us. We all know that from the time we do have menarche till we go into menopause, every woman, every month has got periods. Some periods are heavy, some are light, some are regular, some are irregular, but it troubles everyone. So here today I'm going to be discussing about what is normal period, what is abnormal period, and how we need to really handle it. So first of all, that periods, what is considered to be a normal period? So a girl, from the time she reaches puberty or menopause, has periods every month. When we talk about regular periods, we talk about periods which are taking place every month. So it's important to know what is the length of the cycle. We always calculate the length from the first day of the menstrual period. So if we calculate from the first day of the menstrual period, an average period for a girl who starts menstruation till about three years after the onset menstruation can be anywhere between 21 days to 45 days. For a woman after that or a girl after three years of menarche, till a woman reaches menopause, a normal period is anywhere between 21 days to 35 days. And if a woman is having eight cycles in a year, it's perfectly normal. So we do not really need to bother that, am I having my periods on the same date or not? Because very few women, I would say only 20% of women have it on the same date every month. So if your cycle is anywhere between 21 days to 35 days, consider that to be normal. Second thing about periods that we need to know about is the amount of bleeding. What is normal bleeding? Some women come and tell me, I bled only for two days, that's too less. Another one is comfortable bleeding for seven days. So it is not the number of days that you have the flow. But what is more important is the quantity of the flow. How can I quantify the flow? Asking me whether I'm using three pads, four pads, or am I passing clots? It's very difficult to say what is the quantification. Medically, we say anyone who bleeds more than 80 ml during periods is considered to be heavy. But basically, what is most important is, whatever the quantity of bleeding, is it affecting a girl or a woman physically, mentally, socially, economically? Is she taking off from schools? Is she taking off from college, from work? Is she not going out of the house and is she very scared about these particular days because she bleeds heavily? Woman has to decide if the particular amount of bleeding is troubling her, is affecting the quality of her life, then that is considered to be a heavy menstrual period and she needs to contact the doctor. Ma'am, the ma third thing uh, that we need to talk about periods is the pain during the periods. How much is the pain? Young girls do have pain and this particular pain comes normally maybe a day before you start the periods and it may last for two or three days after the periods. Now, this particular pain, if it affects your going to school, college, or taking off from work, it needs to be taken care of. So when do you really need to meet your gynecologist? If your periods are more than 35 or 45 days and they're coming so irregularly, or if you're flowing excessively so that your quality of life is affected, you're taking breaks from work, you're really upset about it. Or if your pain is so severe that you need to take off from work or you're needing too many medications. In such a case, it's important to contact your gynecologist and not sit at home. The reason I'm telling this again, because yesterday itself, I saw a girl, lady of about 44 years who has been having heavy periods, but she's thinking, no, this is normal for me. And today, yesterday, she came to me with a hemoglobin of 6.1. That means she has been bleeding heavily over a period of the next three to four years. But she considers that to be normal, but it is not normal because her hemoglobin has come to 6.1. So do not sit at home. Do not think it will pass away. If it is affecting you, if it's really, really 
causing a lot of fatigue, if it's decreasing your productivity, if it's really affecting you psychologically, take it seriously and come to a gynecologist. So now let's move on to the next exactly how do the gynecologist treat if you come to us with heavy periods. So let us divide it according to the age. If we have young girls who after having menarche, the first three years after menarche, we do really don't do anything much if your periods are irregular. Because that's the time when there's a hormonal imbalance. And it's very likely that the girls may not have regular periods. They have one period and then for the next three to four months, they may not have any bleeding at all. So these particular girls are treated when they have heavy periods. They don't stop. They keep on and on for about a month, two months, something which we call as a puberty menorrhagia. These are the girls who need to be taken care of or if the periods are really affecting the productivity. So after three years of menopause to all throughout the pre-productive age, the cause of a heavy periods has to be evaluated. The evaluation that is done is first of all to find the hemoglobin levels that we do a complete blood count. The second thing we also need to rule out the thyroid status. Because many times hypothyroidism itself, if untreated, leads on to heavy irregular periods. That's very important get to some. I just ladies in the productive age group. And even for those who are in the perimenopause, so that's between 40 to 50 years of age. So with an ultrasound, what are we really looking for? For young girls, we are mainly looking for, do they have polycystic ovaries? Because polycystic ovaries can lead to irregular periods, heavy periods, less periods, and they can even in these cases be continuous periods. So young girls around 20, 25 years of age, a predominant reason to find that out is polycystic ovaries. This ultrasound also helps us to find that do they have any problem within the uterus? Is there any fibroid that's a growth of the muscle? What is the thickness which is there within the endometrium? Something called as the endometrial thickness. So this is what we are looking for. Now, in the reproductive age group, that is anywhere between 25 to 40 years of age, it's predominantly hormonal treatment, hormonal misbalance, which is a result of these. Or sometimes the women tend to take medications like contraceptive pills, which they have not taken very well. Or they have a carpet in place. And this particular carpet in place sometimes does lead to very heavy periods. So a detailed history is taken as for any medications, as for any procedures which have been done for them, then we also tend to look for hypothyroidism in them, do an ultrasound, and in such cases, offer women who is in the reproductive age group, that's between 25 to 40 years. It may be nothing more than sometimes an ovarian cyst, which may be leading to irregular periods. It may be fibroids. These fibroids, especially when they're very close to the cavity or projecting into the cavity, can lead to heavy, painful periods. Thirdly, we sometimes do have endometrial polyps. That is the polyps which occurs within the lining of the uterus. These particular polyps may be single, they may be multiple, and they may be the cause of continuous bleeding off and on. And they tend to result with not just the regular periods, but spotting that tends to take place in between. So these women, apart from ultrasound, in the reproductive age group, we also need to do a local examination. Have a look at the cervix. Cervix is the mouth of the uterus. Look there's any particular erosion. Erosion means there's any particular raw areas on it. Are there any polyps on the cervix? And we also take something called the pap smear. That's a pepinkelau smear, which is a screening test for the cervical cancer. Having done all these factors, and if we do not find any specific reason for the heavy menstrual period in these women between 25 to 40 years of age, then the treatment is predominantly medical. And in the medical treatment, the treatment that we tend to offer to them is a hormonal treatment, which may vary from person to person, but generally it contains estrogen and progesterone, which are given every 21 days to regularize the cycle, to decrease the blood flow. Sometimes we may not be giving it only for 21 days, we may extend it for up to three months, especially the women who have got heavy periods, and then give them a break. Then again, three months and give them a break so that the bleeding is less and they tend to build up on their particular hemoglobin. 
If a woman is looking also for a contraception along with the heavy periods, then a very good option is to put something called an LNG IUS or a particular um, small structure like a cavity, which is inserted into the uterus and which releases hormones locally so that she does not need to take any hormones externally. It is released slowly, slowly within the uterus and it tends to make the lining of the uterus very thin. So these women have an added advantage when they had this LNG IUS inside that apart from regulating the cycles, decreasing the blood flow, the blood loss tends to decrease significantly in these women. It also provides contraception. Some women are very resistant to all of these therapies. For them, we can even try if there's nothing grossly abnormal on ultrasound to give them medications only during the periods. We have medications like trexanemic acid, which can be given during the periods, starting from the first day till the heavy periods are there. And we have, there's about 30 to 40% reduction in the blood flow of these patients. So what I want to specify or tell you over here, that you need to be investigated to find a cause, predominantly cause in the reproductive age group between 25 to 40 years of age, is hormonal imbalance if we have not found any other structural defects on the ultrasound. The treatment is predominantly medical. Do not be scared to go to a gynecologist thinking that if I go to her, she's going to conduct a surgery. At this particular age group, simple medications like hormone therapies in the absence of any definite pathological condition on ultrasound, you tend to do extremely well. Along with all this, of course, if your hemoglobin is less, you'll be given an iron therapy to build up your hemoglobin and all the methods to decrease your bleeding will tend to take place. Now coming to that particular group of women between the 40 to 50 years of age, that is what we call as a perimenopausal age group. This is another group that tends to suffer from heavy menstrual bleeding. This is the time before the menopause, which can extend from four years to five years to sometimes about 10 years. An average Indian woman attains menopause at about 46 years of age. Predominantly, women are very lucky. They tend to pass off into menopause by having irregular periods, periods becoming maybe once in three months, once in four months, and slowly passes off. But many, I would say about 20 to 30 percent, tend to have heavy periods during this time. Not only are they heavy, but they tend to get irregular. They may become continuous. Woman tends to have anemia, a lot of fatigue because of hormonal changes, a lot of mood changes. And she comes to us only when she's really troubled. So such women, apart from carrying the basic test I've already talked about as CBC, as well as doing a thyroid, we also need to do an ultrasound for her. We need to take a pap smear if that has not been done before. And then based on that, it is important to do the next step, and that is to find the cause of the bleeding. Again, we know that the cause of the bleeding is predominantly hormonal, but yet we need to take a small biopsy from within the uterus. Now, this particular biopsy is of the endometrium, which we anyway shed every month. We take that. It's an office procedure. You don't need to be admitted into the hospital it is just a 10-minute procedure which is done within the theater, within the OPD. And if you wish, of course, we can take you to the theater under anesthesia. A small piece is taken, which is sent for study. And based on the report of that, then we tend to move ahead with the treatment. The treatment, if on ultrasound, we do not have any polyps, we don't have fibroids, we don't have any other pathological condition, then the treatment is predominantly hormonal. In such age group, I would say the first line of treatment we would prefer is to put in an LNG IUS. That means, again, the same little device I was saying, which is inserted into the uterus, which releases the hormones. It is there for a period of five years, and it helps the woman slowly move into the menopause. Because if she's about 44 having heavy periods, and I have put in an LNG IUS inside, this LNG IUS is going to stay for five years. She may, in this particular time, move into the menopause. And if the periods totally stop, then I can remove this LNG use anytime one year after the total stoppage of periods or after she has received, she has attained menopause. 
If a woman is reluctant, not willing to have this, then of course we can put them on oral hormones, which can be plain progesterones or it can be oral contraceptive pills, which has both estrogen and progesterones, depending on her requirement for contraception. If she wants also contraception, then estrogen plus progesterone would be preferable. If she's not willing for a contraception and not willing for an LNG use, then maybe an oral progesterone itself can be given. This all will depend upon what the report of the endometrial biopsy is. Here I really want to tell each one of you that surgery or removal of the uterus is not for all patients who come to us with heavy periods between the age of 40 to 50 years. It is reserved as a last option when the medical treatment does not work or in those particular women who have got multiple fibroids, who have got a lot of submucous fibroids, that's a fibroid which is projecting into the cavity where I know my LNG use is not going to work, or who have also got some ovarian, that's a, problems with the ovary with large amount of cysts. These are very selected few women on him. The removal of the uterus is considered as the first option. So do not be scared. Coming to a gynecologist does not mean that you're going to be advised a surgery. It means that you're going to be evaluated by the blood tests, by the ultrasound, by endometrial biopsy if needed, or a hysteroscopy. And then a medical treatment will be advised and surgery only as a last option or in certain conditions which I've already told you where surgery may be needed. The last group of patients come to us are the ones who tend to bleed after having menopause. Menopause, we mean to say a woman who's not had periods for one year is considered to have gone into menopause. Normally, no woman who has reached menopause should ever have any bleeding. But if she does have bleeding after one year of attaining menopause, that particular woman will need to be fully evaluated. We do not like any bleeding after having attained menopause. So she's going to be evaluated by, again, an ultrasound, by doing a pap smear or a liquid-based cytology. Based on the thickness of the endometrium that's aligning within the uterus, if it is less than five, she's just reassured and sent back home. But if it is more than five millimeter, then further evaluation, like hysteroscopy or endometrial biopsy, and based on the findings, further treatment has to be done. So if a woman who is menopausal and she tends to bleed, please reach a gynecologist at the earliest. Of course, we know that you are scared and so are we that any postmenopausal bleeding could also be cancer. But what I want to stress that if 100 women do come to us with menstrual postmenstrual bleeding, only 20, I would say that less than 20 and sometimes even would say that less than 20 have endometrial cancer. The main cause, the main cause is generally a menopausal atrophy, which leads on to the bleeding. So do not be scared. Do approach. Get yourself evaluated. It's good to detect if there is a cancer because it can be treated. It can be removed surgically and you're going to be perfectly fine after that. So it's a sincere advice to each and every girl from the age of adolescence when you attain Benaki to the age of menopause and even postmenopause, If you do have heavy periods, if you are uncomfortable with your periods, do not sit at home. Do not wish that it will become fine by itself. You, all you need is to go to your gynecologist and get yourself evaluated. The first line of treatment is always medical. You'll get adequate hormones. You'll get enough drugs to get your hemoglobin back to normal. Surgery is always the last option. So we need women who are strong, who are leading a good quality of life, and who are independent, who need to take care of themselves because the whole family depends on you. So do take care of yourself. Do approach your gynecologist at any time. So thank you very much. And I'm uh, willing to take if any questions are there. Uh, so uh, doctor, to you. Yes, yes, doctor. What happens when every menstrual bleeding goes untreated? Okay. So if that's what I said, if a heavy menstrual bleeding goes untreated, you're losing blood every month. 
If you're losing blood every month, you're losing hemoglobin every month. The first thing that tends to occur is severe anemia. Anemia, we mean to say, when your hemoglobin goes below 11 gram per cent. We have women who've been bleeding, who come with eight, who come with six. So such anemic women are prone to infections, are heavily fatigued. They may have sleeplessness problems. They're unable to work to the maximum capacity. And these are the women who really get affected. So the main problem that tends to occur is the quality of your life, which is severely compromised. Now, in case you're bleeding heavily and there is a problem inside, there is a polyp, there's a fibroid, there are certain ovarian cysts, then we, if we do nothing about it, we are allowing it to grow, grow to such an extent where the surgery itself is the last option and maybe more difficult. Yes, Meena. Um, Ma'am, what kind of um, mental health will be facing while heavy uh, menstrual bleeding is going on? Okay. So, um, see, I have seen a lot of young girls who come to me with heavy periods. They're depressed. They're very anxious. All of them do not like those five to six days when they're going to have periods. They're so scared every month for those particular six days when they're going to have heavy periods. That in turn, they undergo severe depression prior to these periods come because they don't know how to manage it. Their life gets curtailed. They have to take holidays from the office. They are not going to college in these days. Their friends also, they're not likely to talk. So the mental health is first is a fear that is very strong in them. Second is the anxiety that comes when the periods are likely to come. The third is the depression that they have. And the feeling that I'm not good enough. I'm not able to manage my conditions. And all they need is just a little help and everything tends to come back to normal. So this is the type of things that one needs to really overcome and it's, it's manageable. All you need to do is just treat it. And the treatment is only medical and you'll be back to normal, bouncing back to a good quality of life. Yes. So it is treatable and treatment only. Uh, the treatable treatment you mean to see? So that depends upon, actually, I said, upon the age of a patient. Okay. So generally, uh, from, I would say young kids. Yeah. Mom, from, uh, from which age group it, it cannot be treated? Okay. So I would say there's no particular age group it cannot be treated. Every age the treatment is there, but the type of treatment may vary upon person to person. Person, not for the age. Not for the age. Yeah. It depends to some extent by the age also. Yeah, some extent okay. by the age, because if you're talking of the young girls, you have said that the commonest cause is polycystic ovaries. Polycystic ovaries is a hormonal condition. So the treatment in them is always hormone replacements, hormone corrections that we tend to do. Among the reproductive age group, that's between 25 to 40 years of age. Again, hormones is predominantly responsible. Many of them are polycystic ovaries, but we need to look for fibroids. We need to look for polyps. We need to look for ovarian cysts. So they may require a surgical treatment in case they are responsible for the periods. Okay. So okay. that is Ma'am, does we should follow any diet during the treatment? Or else during the heavy menstrual flow, we have to follow certain kind of uh, diet to control all those things. Okay, so see, the periods cannot be controlled by any particular specific diet. So okay. it is not about being able to control because that's a normal process that happens. Every month, the endometrium has to be shed. Every month, we are to have periods. So the thing that the diet will control for you is that, that it will tend to keep your hemoglobin very high. Even if you're bleeding every month, which is more than the normal. If you're taking a diet which is rich in iron. So rich in iron diet means you're having fruits like apple, you're having anar, you're having a lot of dal. You're going to be having green leafy vegetables. These are very good. If you're non-vegetarian, then even the red meat, they have a lot amount of iron. So first thing is that your diet should have been very good as far as iron is concerned. Second cause that does happen because of heavy periods is a polycystic ovaries. Now, polycystic ovaries generally is associated, I would not say always, but some women are obese. And it is these obese or little overweight girls who tend to have more 
uh, problems with the polycystic. So here the diet is mainly going to be the one which is going to reduce the weights. So you're going to have a healthy diet which is homemade, less of fat, less of cheese, less of McDonald's, less of pizzas and less of things from outside. So it's going to be predominantly salads, vegetables, a good amount of proteins and multigrain other so that you tend to lose weight and you have the proteins and the iron in the right quantity. Totally so no junk food. Junk food is totally out for at all ages, yes, but once a month, everyone's allowed, but not mom, as a result. Mom, does this heavy menstrual uh, flow will affect pregnancy, further pregnancy? Okay, see, it does not affect conception as such, unless or until there is a cause, which I mean to say is that when there is a fibroid which is projecting into the cavity, there are a lot of endometrial polyps, or you have very irregular periods in a polycystic ovaries and conception to get pregnant may be a little difficult. You'll require to be treated to get pregnant. But if you have got pregnant, and because you have regular periods, but just that you have heavy periods, the problem with the pregnancy that can occur is that because you may be anemic, so your chances of miscarriage tends to increase, your chances of having very small babies, your chances of developing in the even severe anemia needing blood transfusions, having a little preterm baby, they tend to increase when you have conceived and you're going into the pregnancy. Heavy menstrual bleeding by itself does not decrease your chances of conception unless and until, as I've said, you have polycystic ovaries, fibroids, ovarian cyst, or you have a cause, you have a specific cause which is detected on the ultrasound for that. So then you need to be treated and the moment you're treated, you can be able to conceive normally. Mom, how long will be the treatment process now? Uh, treatment for uh, heavy menstrual bleeding you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if I'm talking about, um, let's now let's take it age-wise. Suppose I have a young girl of about 20, 22, who's not married, who's having heavy periods, and I find that she's got polycystic ovaries or she just has got heavy periods. I will be putting her onto oral contraceptive pills. The name is oral contraceptive pills, but these are hormones of 21 days, 21 days. And this she can continue for a period of one year. After one year, we can stop it and see how she tends to respond if there's no polycystic ovaries. In case she has polycystic ovaries for which I have been giving her hormones, then I will continue her till she wants to get pregnant. That's the time I'm going to stop it and then allow her to get pregnant. Now, for the women who are in the reproductive age groups between 25 to 40 years of age, first line of therapy, if nothing is a problem, to just give them drugs during the periods, that can be continued for four months, six months. If that does not respond, then oral contraceptive pills, again, the hormonal therapy, that as long as she's happy to take it. Because it has an advantage of giving her contraception as well as decreasing her periods. There's no restriction. If we have ideally chosen a candidate who's not contraindicated for these medications, we can continue them till she wants the next pregnancy. But if she does not want the next pregnancy and she's happy to use it, I can continue it for five years, 10 years, 15 years, depending on how long she wants to be continued to. And if I'm talking of a woman who's 40 plus and who have found that there is a problem on my biopsy and she needs some hormonal misbalance, then I will give her hormones minimum for six months. And if I put in an LNG IUS, that is there for five years. So the treatment is individualized. It is The duration is with the discussion with the lady. How long is she happy to take it? We can always stop and see whether she responded or not. If she's well responded, we can stop it. If she's not, then we can continue it, maybe for five years, six years, as long as we can manage. Yeah. Ma'am, are there is factor in the treatment can associate with? Uh, see, whenever we are giving any hormonal treatment, we always evaluate and see whether she's a good candidate for it. So good candidate, I mean to say is that women who are very old than 30, these women, we are a little uh, cautious about giving the hormonal treatment. Do they have any diabetes? Diabetes, which tends to affect the whole system of the body, their kidneys, retina, everything has been affected. Do they have high blood pressure, which is totally uncontrolled? Is there any family history of breast cancer? If there's a family history or any strokes at a young age or cardiac disorders, that means any young people in the family have died because of a heart attack or she has suffered from any liver. So there are a few contraindications which we always take with the history. 
And if you find that any of these contraindications are there, then alter the treatment. We may not give the East some um, other type of hormones. So these are the only problems. Then we evaluate them every four to six months and see how they are faring with it. But I would like to say that these hormones do not increase weight. That is a problem that everyone says. If you're putting me on hormones, I'm going to put on weight. No, the weight increases not more than one kg in a year. So do not refuse to take hormones if your doctor has advised you to take and you need them just because you think that weight is going to be a problem in these particular cases. Yeah, Meena. Uh, Ma'am, then what is the treatment for pro uh, prolonged pre period in uh, adolescent age, Ma'am? So if I, as I said, in a adolescent age group, if you're having eight periods in a year, it is all right. So eight periods in a year means you're having one period, maybe even one and a half months. If your periods are not very heavy, that just that they're coming in 35 days or 40 days in an adolescent girl, and you do not have a problem of acne, and you do not have a problem of excessive hair in your body, then we may not do anything at all. But if it is associated with acne, if it is associated with excessive hair on the body, especially on the face where you need to go again and get them removed, and your periods are irregular, and ultrasound may show that you have polycystic ovaries, then we put you again on a hormonal treatment of 21 days, 21 days to make your periods regular, to decrease the acne and also to reduce the hair on your body. For reducing the hair on your body, you need minimum treatment for one and a half to two years with these hormones before we get an effect on it. So we may not stop it very early if it is a polycystic ovaries for which we are giving you this particular treatment. But my sincere advice to all adults and girls nowadays, we have a lot of obesity. If you tend to work on your weight, if you tend to work on your weight through exercise as well as diet, many a times your periods will become regular without any medication. So first to work on your health, go in for regular exercises. We all are sitting on computers. The youngsters are now only onto the phones and the computers exercise, going out for walks, cycling, playing out is much less. So do that. Do not eat junk food, eat healthy food, reduce weight, and your periods will become normal in about 50 to 60 percent of patients. Yeah, Mina. Mom, there's a myth kind of thing that uh, AV flow will lead for two weeks and all. Is that true? Mm -hmm. uh, heavy flow, it? yes, yes, it can happen. See, heavy flow, we mean to say there are two times. One is you're bleeding only for five days, but every day you're bleeding so heavily that you're passing clots, you're using your five, seven pads, your dresses are getting soaked. That is one time. The second type of a heavy flow may be when you're continuously bleeding nonstop for 10 days, 15 days, sometimes even 21 days. So both the things are considered as a heavy flow. Now, in both of these things, you need to take treatment because if you continuously bleed like, like this, you are going to lose hemoglobin and become severely anemic. So both the things will require treatment and it is true that it can be either of the ways. Yes, Meena. Okay, ma'am. What kind of tests are needed for this, ma'am? What kind of examination and evaluation are done so, for this kind of... Ma'am, you said two types of AV flow uh, during the six days and during mm -hmm. two weeks. What kind of... Can you separate those yeah. uh, two types? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, how do I separate them? So first of all, uh, you asked me a question about investigations that we need to do. How do we evaluate these patients? So I understand uh, you must be predominantly talking about the youngsters and the young uh, people over here. So first of all, you know, the investigations can be divided into two types. First of all is to find a cause. And the second is to find what is the effect on health because of this continuous bleeding that is taking place. So the effect as far as on health is concerned, it's predominantly a complete blood count. That is to look at the hemoglobin levels because has she become very anemic because of the continuous loss. Now, second is we want to find the cause. So among the cause, thyroid is one of the important factors. Prolactin is something that's important. So these two particular hormones are always investigated to find out, are you hypothyroid? So if you are, then maybe be treatment with the thyroid hormone sometimes tends to make you much better over here. Mm -hmm. Second thing that, of course, we take a detailed history. After this, an ultrasound is also very important. Now, for 
the young girls it is ultrasound is done from the tummy we ask you to hold on a lot of urine and then it is done from the abdomen how does ultrasound help us ultrasound will help us to find what is the size of the uterus what is the lining within your uterus is it thick is it normal is there a polyp polyp means a little growth which may be there and it will also look at your ovaries are your ovaries bulky bulky with polycystic polycystic means very small follicles they're little black dots of one to two millimeters which are full in both the ovaries or is there a big cyst cyst is a collection of fluid it's just maybe a collection of blood what is found over there so if your ultrasound is perfectly normal but with only polycystic ovaries that may be a cause of prolonged bleeding irregular periods so we will treat according to that but in case we are not able to find anything in this one, it is considered to be a hormonal problem. For the hormones, we don't have many blood tests that we can do. And actually, they're not very beneficial for us to be able to find. Only for polycystic ovaries, we do on the second or the third day of your periods, a hormonal profile where we do FSH, LH, we do prolactins, estradiol. Even we look for the testosterone, depending upon your particular symptoms, which is called the PCOD panel. That is done on the second or the third day to be able to really define the particular cause. So the irregular continuous bleeding or very heavy bleeding plus regular periods that we tend to marry out. Yes, Mary. Uh, the, again, there is a myth that uh, nowadays uh, kids are uh, yeah, reaching their puberty at the age of 10, the early age. Does it affect any kind of thing later when they reach about 35, all those things? Okay. Now, first of all, it's not a myth. It's a reality that girls are getting their menarche or puberty much earlier than before. Previously, in our times, we would say 13 years. Now, I think it's come down to 10 Maybe the children were in the class four or five itself, they'd start having the periods. So it is. I think it is mainly because of um, I, it's it's genetic to some extent, or it may be that they're built because all our kids are little heavy. The heavy pe children tend to get periods much earlier. It's a type of food. But yes, I agree. The periods are starting much earlier. Now, does it affect your uh, at thirty five? No, it does not affect. Even if you are having periods at the age of 10 years or if you're having it early at the age of 11 years, your further life is not affected by getting your periods below. But the problem lies if you're having it below 8 years of age. So if you do develop periods before 8 years, you need to contact an endocrinologist and a gynecologist. That is what needs to be treated because very early periods, you'll be a little short in height. Very early periods may have a little problem so you need more hormonal treatment evaluation and that's but if you're having anywhere between 9 to 13 years of age that's a normal time of getting your periods which is called as a menarche and this will affect your long-term reproductive outcome or your long-term quality of life yes ma'am ma'am do you have any advice for the young uh, young people to avoid uh, uh, this kind of issues like heavy menstrual flow or any anything for the young people okay so uh, see many things are not in our hands so certain things are there which is a part of your body first of all we need to accept it. some girls are unfortunate to have heavy periods to have irregular periods one should not feel that thing why me i have seen young girls coming with that guilt that why only me my friends are perfectly fine i'm having this problem i'm not so this is about you you need to accept your body and you need to accept that this can happen to you but what you need to do more important is talk to your mom talk to your friends and then reach a gynecologist you'll be taken care of now as far as the advice is concerned see the in young age the predominant cause is polycystic ovaries polycystic ovary about 30 percent of girls are born with polycystic ovaries but not all of them have symptoms it's only very few about 10 percent who land up with the symptoms of irregular periods with acne with extra hair so this particular 10 person who land up with these symptoms are generally found to be overweight or obese so if in your young age of 8, 9, 10, you're not taking care of yourself, you're not out to be a sporty child, you're sitting always at home on the computer's books or on this, advice to all the youngsters is to please lead a very active life. 
to get out to exercise daily morning and evening play sports so that your body is well toned and your weight is just adequate for your area second advice is about your diet it's very important to eat whatever your mother serves you on the table just do not refuse to have dal just do not refuse to have sabji because she's making it every day have milk now this is something else i have seen that the girl youngsters are refusing to take milk and it's not the full cream you need to have a double tone milk because that is what is providing you proteins and that is what is providing you the calcium and you don't need any fat so have milk which provides you proteins it provides you calcium have a healthy diet which is homemade yes you can have food outside no one stops you from going to restaurants or to eating any of these junk food but not more than once in 15 days and that day can be a cheat day you are allowed to go into that but next day exercise better and come back to do lead a very good balance in life with diet exercise so part yes meena again there is a myth kind of thing that uh, when a fat girl uh, will uh, it's fat due to she is not flowing for a month or two month delay periods mm-hmm. all those things due to that only is that true again yeah uh, you know you really don't know uh, you know it's a cat and mouse race who's who do you tell so all the girls they say because i'm not getting paid so i have put on weight it's the reverse because you are overweight you are not getting periods in time <laughs> it's very easy to blame everyone outside but then to take the responsibility yourself so i keep telling them just look at the other way out because you are overweight you are not getting periods don't think that because the period, period what is periods periods is very natural some people feel i'm flowing i'm taking out the dirt from my body i'm taking out all the water from my body so i should get my periods no periods is just a lining which is inside your uterus which is hardly about 8 mm which tends to come out so how can that actually cause you to put on weight no they can be some amount of flu food protein you may feel your fingers a little tight your, your finger rings are your periods but the fact is that it's not the periods to blame it's your weight to be blamed get on your weight properly and your periods will start flowing normally yes meena i hope i've been able to get across this point <laughs> and one more thing ma'am how to prevent early menac ma'am how to prevent an early menarche okay again uh, see certain things are hormonal certain things at this time which you cannot help out so there is no particular way to be able to say if it is genetically or hormonally set for you to have at a particular age because genetically or so some mothers have had the menarche at the age of 10 11 even the daughters are likely to have it much earlier but again it is a lifestyle which can help you delay so if you're leading a very active lifestyle where you are on to exercises running sports and again you are adequate weight that means your weight is appropriate for your particular age then you can delay a menarche the girls who are a little more obese they tend to have the periods a little earlier so again it's all about your healthy lifestyle but i would not say that that is the only factor that may be only contributing about 20 to 30% rest of them is not under your control to have it early but accept it if it is early if it's coming at age of 10 it's coming at age of 11 accept it don't feel too upset that's the new normal now okay ma'am yeah. and and then um, uh, food everything is normal now it we have one more myth kind of thing is eating chicken will lead for periods again will flow for again uh, a week or all that is true again ma'am the same thing old myth and all eating uh, chicken <laughs> yeah, yeah you mean to say eating chicken um, is better you, i couldn't hear you in between yeah so it, it's it's see it's uh, non veg is good 
in the sense i do not say do not go in for a non veg diet because non veg provides you a good amount of protein it's going to be providing you a good amount of other uh, minerals and all that is required but the way it is cooked that is very important so if you are having chicken in the form of tandoori if you are having it a roasted chicken if you are having chicken soups if you are having chicken broths they are very good but if you are having the chicken which is prepared with lot of uh, masalas and you have all of these oil based and you having it very frequently all these heavy chickens like you have the chicken curries you having the chicken tikkas and you having all those and that cannot be effective but it's nothing like that going off chicken is the best or going off this if that's your part of the diet please take it but take it the one that's well cooked not that kind of way ma'am that they will say no ma'am the country chicken the normal yeah. chicken that kind of thing will affect the periods all those things no it generally doesn't you know that doesn't. that oh, okay. uh, will not be old old. yeah <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a myth. we have a lot of it myths at present you know the myths that even today that we have that when you are having periods um you cannot be going to temples or you cannot be doing this in the house yes. you're going to be in one room with yourself yes you yes know, because this is something that dirty that's going on that's flowing out that that's a myth that's entirely a myth it's nothing dirty that's coming out it's a normal process of one's life so i think the older generation has to change and the youngsters have to stand up and say no this is nothing very bad that's happening to me this is something that's a part of my process and that needs to be done even yes, taking yes. pickles yes ma'am yes pickle we are not When supposed to take lots of times stay in pickles because that is not right yeah yeah so that's also a myth that has to be removed and then i think certain things were good at last time previous generations or older times when the woman was having periods would be made to sit in a room because she would get rest <laughs> otherwise she's been working so heavily in the house she's been doing so many things so maybe in a way it was good that those days when she's bleeding and she's tired and fatigued she's getting some rest but attaching it to things like you can't do this you can do this you cannot do that that is all i think uh, something we need to do away with because that has got nothing to do with the reality it's a normal process and we need to say it's a part of our maturing it's a part of womanhood any girl who enters into it it's a part of womanhood and you need to be happy about it you need to appreciate it you need to learn to live with it and you need to accept it and if you do that it's a wonderful journey you will have ahead mom uh, do you have anything like preventing uh, this heavy uh, flow kind of thing prevention okay. precautions Okay, so as far as prevention is concerned, if you know that I I have heavy periods every month, if you know that I do have pain every month whenever the period tends to start, so pain is something that is also another thing that we need to talk about. So some girls have very severe pain, which starts either one day before or it starts on the day of periods and lasts for two to three days. So in such cases, you can start on taking any of the painkillers, which can be started a day before when you start feeling that I'm going to have the pain. So it can be taken safely. That's again a myth. Many of the girls suffer from severe pain, and they do not take any painkillers because somewhere someone has told them by taking these painkillers, you'll have a problem in conception or conceiving later on. No, it's wrong. Sitting at home, not going to work, not going to college, not going to school is worse. than actually taking painkillers and moving out maximum you need only one or two tablets for a day and that does not matter you can easily take these painkillers even for bleeding if you know that i'm going to have heavy bleeding and i may use five six pads it may be difficult for me to go out you can take their medications available these medicines are not hormonal medications they are given only during the time of periods just take them two or three times a day meet your gynecologist she will suggest those medications only for two or three days and your periods will reduce by 40% which is a huge reduction and you can manage to go ahead and lead a normal life so it's more about not just thinking okay this is an idea it's okay no you're not going to accept it try and change it there are medications you can take them for short periods that do not harm you they will not affect your fertility in future become more strong so that you're able to become very productive yes ma'am as you said you, we can take painkiller pills all those things that 
the affect our pregnancy later on taking so much of painkiller to avoid the pain that will affect any kind of pregnancy further no it doesn't no it doesn't again that doesn't is also do. they used to say yes, that. <laughs> yeah that's what i raised this because all the girls coming uh, with severe pain and they do nothing about it they do nothing they are in so much of pain so i always tell who told you not to take it no my mom told me not to take it because it will affect my further conception no it will not you are taking this medicine only for a day or for a two days or three days suppose you have a fracture don't you take medications painkillers for a long time you got a sprain don't you take painkillers for five days six days seven days painkillers one or two tablets daily for just about two days in a month is not going to affect your pregnancy status later on it's not going to affect your general health instead of suffering losing out on productivity take this painkillers i assure you they do not have a major effect if you really need them take them similarly if you really need and someone has prescribed you hormonal treatment the gynecologist will only prescribe you when you need them they also do not affect your future fertility that's something that again girls have you give me a contraceptive pills how will i be able to conceive no it does not affect your fertility this is essential for your health and your health is just prime now how will you become pregnant if you're anemic if you're tired if you're not good inside how will you get married and become pregnant so don't think about it. both the drugs can be taken if advised they have no effect on fertility later on with the doctor advice we can take pills without doctor advice we cannot yes. no yes we actually it's uh, very unfortunate that in india you get pills off the counter but no only go to a doctor advice is go to a doctor let us see you let us write the right medications and if she has written take it do not deny it just because you have those myths in your brains yes yeah. yes do not uh, depend on the myth as well as yes that's true mom uh, when we are reaching 30 we are conception for the first time does it affect any kind of thing mom okay so you mean to say that uh, you are 30 and this is the first time you are trying to conceive right yes yes so um, i think it's now again i would say a new norm because girls are getting educated they're spending time on education they're looking for work they're looking for stability in life and then they'll get married and then they'll try and conceive So the problem that lies is that 30 is not a bad age to try and conceive but 35 is where we say a cut off if you have not delivered by 35 then after that conception becomes difficult because after 35 years of age your number of eggs start reducing your fertility status becomes much less then you land up going to doctors trying to conceive by other methods so please try and conceive career is important i agree studies are important i agree but prioritize in your life every age has particular priority so between 30 to 32 years of age i would it would be much better for all the girls who think about pregnancy do get pregnant there's generally no problem by the time of 32 but after 35 yes there is a lot of difficulty in conception there's no link between the heavy flow and the pregnancy as well no there's no link unless the heavy flow is because of a cause that particular cause has to be evaluated and treated if there's no cause it's just a hormonal problem which is only regular periods but heavy there's no definitely polycystic ovaries yes you have a difficult in conception endometrial polyps or fibroids you may have a problem in conception but just a heavy periods which is regular coming every month but you're having heavy flow you've been evaluated there's no cause found it does not affect your pregnancy potential mom a uh, final question mom uh, any kind of advice for the young people as well as uh, people facing lot uh, lots of depression uh, due to the heavy flow you want to tell something for the people yeah so um first thing is that uh, mental health is something that's very you no know, in the sense that that's to be acceptable you don't need to push it under the carpet if you are facing certain mental problems you need to contact a psychologist and a gynecologist and if it is only because of your heavy periods please come to a gynecologist these periods can be treated you will be perfectly fine it's is just about some medications and once your periods become all right your mental health will be perfectly fine if you do not want to come personally and talk nowadays we have a teleconsult 
please go on to a teleconsult if you really don't want to come and see me or see any gynecologist on the teleconsult we can help you out where we are just talking face to face and even if you don't want to show your picture it's fine we'll just talk to you across just talking itself can make a 90% difference in your life all you need to do is get out of your shell re talk to your mom talk to a gynecologist mental health will be taken care of and if needed a psychologist and you'll be fine you cannot suffer silently at home and you are not allowed to do that we have enough people to support you we have enough help to support you we need to reach out we just need to reach out yes thank you ma'am this was a wonderful section with you uh, stay tuned for more session with the apple cradle and children hospital thank you um, thank you for the live like share and subscribe thank you thank you ma'am thank you very much it was indeed a pleasure and i hope i have been able to reach out to the young girls and women i'm always there to help everyone out thank you so much meena you've been a great moderator along with that thank you so much thank you thank okay. you ma'am okay bye bye